Okay, so in this video, what I want to do is I want to take a few minutes and give you an example of how to apply the principle of virtual work. So this isn't going to be a, a full comprehensive derivation of it by any means. All that we're going to do here is we're going to apply it to solve for displacement in the two-part truss. So, you know, you might be given something that looks like this, where you have two members, you know, AB and BC, and, and we're given, uh, you know, some member properties. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and find the vertical displacement here at a joint, so specifically, you know, joint B. So what does that look like? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and we're gonna apply this principle of virtual work where we know that the external virtual force, this one unit load, uh, times the real displacement, so the work caused by this is going to equal the energy caused by the internal virtual force and the, the, the actual real deformations. So, you know, maybe you want to look at a derivation. I'll put a link below to somebody smarter than me doing that. But hey, um, what I want to do here is I just want to kind of apply that and see what it looks like. Okay, so you might be working on a homework problem. This might be an FE review problem. But either way, you, you have to know how to just apply the basics of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow these steps. We're going to go through, you know, step one through four. And first thing that we want to do is we want to draw the structure with the unit load, right, at the joint and in the direction where you want to find the displacement. So this is pretty important. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the structure down. And once I've copied the structure down, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and delete the load, any loads that are on it, right? So the loads that are on it, we don't want. What we do want to do is we want to put a unit load at the joint and in the direction where you want to find the displacement. So here we're told we want, you know, joint B. So we're going to look at joint B and we know we want a vertical displacement. So we're going to guess that this displacement goes down and we're going to put a one kilonewton virtual load on. So again, this is our virtual, you know, force here. So we, we put that on, but it's it's one unit, and I like to match the units, you know, whatever we're given here, we're given one kilonewtons, let's use kilonewtons, okay? We'll look at units later, but basically we look at that, and that's step one. So first, you know, we, we applied the, the, the one unit load on this structure. Okay, so this is, you know, if, we, if we're labeling this, this might be step one. Okay, step two, what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to now solve this truss for the internal virtual forces N. And with a two bar truss, especially if we have a horizontal member like this, this is something that you know, definitely could show up on the FE where it's, it makes it a little bit simpler. But what we want to do is we want to go through and we solve for, you know, these virtual forces that we'll call little n. So let me move this down here and, and we'll look at that, right? So step two is just going to be what? We're going to solve for little n, which are the internal forces. And to do that, I'm just going to look at a free body diagram of joint uh, B. So let's take a look at that. And for joint B, we have, you know, one kilonewton acting down. And then also, we're going to have some forces from AB and BC. And what I am going to guess here is, is AB is going to be in tension. Uh, BC, um, you know, it's likely going to be in compression. I, I'm going to keep it, you know, shown as compression here. So if we show it as compression, pointing towards the joint, that's okay. And, and with BC, the other thing that I want to do is I want to break that into components. So I will, you know, break up and I'll have BCX and BCY. Okay, so that's my free body diagram. And hopefully the statics behind this isn't too crazy, but you know, all that we're gonna do here is we're just gonna, you know, take some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. You know, if we say up is positive, well what do we get? We get minus one kilonewton, you know, plus BCY equals zero. So BCY equals one kilonewton. Okay, hopefully that's pretty pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, then what we can do is we can apply, you know, our our um, force member geometry relationship here and, and translate BCY to BCX, right? Because with truss, we know that the force has to line up right along the member. So if that's the case, you know, this is 1.5, 2, and we can, you know, look at this triangle here as 1.52, I'm sorry, 2, and this is going to be 2.5. Okay, so this is like our member geometry. And that's going to match essentially our force geometry. So if this is, you know, BC, we're also going to have uh, BCY and BCX. 
And once we know that, we can use these relationships to figure out well, both BCX and BC. So we can say, well, BCX over uh, BCY has to equal uh, essentially 2 over 1.5. Okay. And what, what does that mean? That means uh, BCX is basically just 2 over 1.5 or equal to 4 thirds of BCY, which in this case BCX is just going to equal 4 thirds of a kilonewton. Okay, so that's good. We can, you know, circle it and be happy. Um, the next thing that I want to do here is just for completeness is we want to go to BC and look at BC over, over BCY is also going to equal, if we look at this, well, we have BC 2.5, right, over BCY uh, 1.5. And what does this lead to? It leads to, well, BC is going to equal 5 thirds of BCY. In other words, BC is going to equal 5 thirds of a kilonewton. And it's important to remember that when we look at this, right, we know that we were drawing BC in compression. So these are both all, you know, all three components and um, well, the two components and the resultant are going to be in compression. Okay, once we know that, we can come back and we can solve. And we can look and we can say, okay, well, we can also take some of the forces in the x direction equals zero and anything to the right is going to be positive. So we get minus AB, you know, plus BCX. Yeah, S equals zero, those are the only two forces in the x direction. And hopefully it becomes pretty obvious that AB equals BCX. In other words, AB equals, you know, four thirds of a kilonewton. Uh, this is shown in tension pulling away from the joint and this is gonna be tension as well. Okay, so that's pretty good. We, these are our internal forces N and we went ahead and we solved for them. The next step three is kind of to repeat the process. Okay, so when we do this, we're gonna repeat the process, but instead of using the one kilonewton, we're gonna use 24 kilonewtons. Now with problems where, you know, I'm just gonna scroll back up here for a second, but with problems where we have the same load, essentially the same load direction and the same load geometry and everything about the, the loading you know, pattern is the same except for the magnitude. That makes this a little bit easier because we can essentially come down here and scale these forces uh, to get big N. Or, you know, we can go through this process again and solve for big N. So let me write that down. And I'm actually just going to take all this and copy it down in this case because it's, it's basically the same thing except for, and I'll show you where the except is. Okay, so I copy that down and really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, instead of one kilonewton, what are we really going to have at this joint? We're really going to have 24 kilonewtons. And how does that change things? Well, it changes this one kilonewton to, you know, our BCY is now going to be, well, 24 kilonewtons, right? And I should probably put that in here as well. So minus 24 kilonewtons, right? So again, all I'm doing here is I'm just repeating this process, but instead of having the one kilonewton, now it's 24 kilonewtons. And hopefully you can see that, you know, we still end up with the same relationship. And instead of four thirds of a kilonewton, now we get four thirds of 24 kilonewtons, which is going to be 32 kilonewtons and five thirds of 24 kilonewtons, which in this case is going to be 40 kilonewtons. So again, we went, you know, you can go through the same exact process um, to solve uh, to solve for n in this case because the load is is exactly in, in the same direction, the same location, and there are no other loads on the structure. Okay, so if we come here, you know, we're going to get AB equals BCX again. So AB is just going to be 32 kilonewtons. Okay, so we went through, and again, just looking at our step by step, we solve for the the Virgil's forces, we solve for the real forces, and now what we want to do is we want to come and apply this principle of virtual work. So what I like to do when I do that is I like to make a table. Okay, and this table is going to be fairly small uh, because there's only two members. So what we want to do is we want to apply the principle of virtual work, right? And if you if you forgot, what we have is one, you know, times delta equals the sum of little n times big N L over AE. And in this case, all the members have the same A and the same E, so we can kind of pull that out of the summation. But to do this, what I like to do is to set up a table. So, you know, I'm just going to come over here and uh, set up a little bit of a table. So what I'm going to have, I'm going to have the member, the, the little n, the big N, 
the L, and I'm just going to do n times n L, right? In this case, because a e is constant, I'm not going to do all that math out here. I'll I'll save that till the end, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to have a b, and I'm going to have b c. So if we remember, right, um, when we come up here, we have a b is four thirds of a kilonewton in tension and because it's in tension I'm going to put positive and I should also probably label this as kilonewtons you know, label this as kilonewtons and label this as meters so at the end of the day we're going to end up with something that's kilonewtons squared you know meters and it's important to keep those units because those units are going to play a, a you know a, a role when you come down to solve for your final it's a final answer so if we come back up we had BC was what five thirds of a kilonewton and that was in compression, so we'll say minus five thirds, right? Positive is for tension, negative is for compression. And then we can come here and we can say, well, BC is, you know, 40 kilonewtons in our uh, real case. It's still in compression, so we're going to keep negative. And then AB is 32 kilonewtons, so we can put those in. The lengths AB, if you remember, this was 2, uh, BC was 2.5. And, and when we do this out, right, 4 thirds times 32 times 2, we get 85.33 kilonewton squared meters. Okay, and we do, we do minus 5 thirds times minus 40. What do we get? We get 166.67, uh, you know, kilonewton squared meters. We add those together, and here we're just going to get the sum of N and L. And what do we get? This is 252 kilonewton squared meters. Okay, so we're not done. What we need to do next is we need to actually plug into this formula to solve it. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have, you know, on this side we're going to have one kilonewton times delta is going to equal, well, what's it going to equal? Well, it's going to equal the sum of all this, and, and I'm going to write this as 252 kilonewton squared meters. Okay, divided by the area which we had was 2,500 millimeters squared and times E which was 200 GPA, gigapascals. Okay, so this is a kind of a units nightmare. I, I, maybe it's not for you, maybe you really like uh, metric units, but metric isn't my first love but um, you know you, you get used to it and especially on the FE you got to get used to metric so what do we want to do is well we want to cancel out as many units as we can so we know a kilonewton can cancel out on this side we can get rid of that square but we're still left with meters on the top millimeters squared on the bottom we have these GPA term so let's start converting okay so what we know is we can say well we have one GPA you know divided by a thousand MPA. Okay, that helps us a little bit. We also know that one MPA is equal to what one Newton per millimeter squared, which helps us a little bit because now what we can do is we can cancel out our millimeters squared. Okay, our MPAs cancel out, our GPAs cancel out, but we're still left with you know this meter game up here and a kilonewton here. So um, to go from kilonewtons to newtons, what I want to do is I'm going to multiply it by what do we have? We have one thousand newtons per one kilonewton. So what happens here? Now we can cross off the other kilonewton, the other kilonewton, the newton and newton goes away. And we're left with meters. I like to get displacement in millimeters, so I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 millimeters per meter. So good grief, that's a lot of unit conversions, but what we're left with is, is essentially units in millimeters, which is what we want. So we're gonna get solve for some di displacement here in millimeters. So when you multiply all this out, 252, essentially what you're gonna, you know, one of these thousands cancel out, but you know, 252 over 2,500, over 200, times 1,000, what we get for an answer here is our delta equals 0.5 zero four millimeters okay so what that means is we get a positive value it means that what we had assumed for you know displacement um, going down is actually right and you know this is this is what we end up with so again what we did is we were able to go through and apply you know the principle of virtual work where, where first we applied this unit force then we solve for the virtual forces then the real forces and then all we did is we applied this equation and we made sure that when we applied the equation we um, we 
did our unit conversions to make sure things were, were right. Hey, so I hope this video helps you. And you know, if, if you have questions, feel free to drop a comment. And otherwise, keep working hard. Keep moving onward and upward.